All right, everybody, we're going to be talking about artifacts in 10 minutes or less. If you have not heard of artifacts yet, uh, let me show you the intro video, which is actually pretty cool. So give me a second here. We'll pull up the intro video and let you watch it because it's actually pretty sweet. And it's kind of loud. So let me... There we go. You see it's creating some basic SVG images, right? Scale with vector graphics images. And then it goes through, creates a few more seashells. Okay, simple side scrolling game now. HTML5. What it can do. And that's that. So let's do it ourselves. If you want to take advantage of this in Claude, you have to go to where your name is in the lower left hand side. Right here, you see it says your name. Let's go to feature preview. And there's only one feature preview right now artifacts. You need to turn on artifacts. And so the next new chat you do <coughs> will have artifacts enabled. So we close this. Um, you know it's enabled, by the way, because it will show your model. And to the right of that, it's going to show one experimental feature enabled. If you click on that, it shows you the experimental feature. Um, presumably, they're going to have more experimental features down the road. Now, let's uh, explore it for ourselves, uh, shall we? Let's do something cool like, say, uh, can you describe penguins? in three paragraphs and away we go now while that's generating let's talk a little bit about what's going on with artifacts so artifacts allow claude to share substantial standalone content with you in a dedicated window separate from the main conversation they make it easy to work with significant pieces of content side by side <coughs> with your chats okay um, Claude creates an artifact when the content it, it is sharing has the following characteristics, typically over 15 lines of content, blah, blah, blah. That's not true. You can always tell it to add stuff to artifacts. We'll see that in a second. What does it do? Well, it does markdown or plain text. It doesn't do Word docs or PowerPoints or anything like that yet. It does code snippets, websites, HTML, uh, scalable vector, vector graphics. You saw that. Diagrams and flowcharts, pretty cool. And interactive React components, for those who are familiar with those. If you're not, I'm going to show them to you anyway. All right, so <coughs> here we go. So let's try a few things here. Now we've had to describe this. Let's kick in with our artifacts and say, hey, put that into a well-formatted or a formatted text document. Uh, it's going to create a markdown document. And now notice the artifact window pops up. And there it is, a nice formatted you know it's got bold and all kinds of cool stuff bullet points a nice formatted document by the way once it pops and shows you an artifact if you click on this left arrow it'll take you back to where you can see all your artifacts now you have not only generated documents but any documents you've added to your artifacts as part of your interaction with it all right so um moving on how about this since we're talking about penguins anyway and i love talking about penguins uh, create a flow chart of the typical penguin life cycle. So here we go. So once again, it's going to create the text-based version of the flow chart and then generate the flow chart. And now you can see a typical flow chart for a penguin uh, life cycle. Very cool stuff. So yes, you can do that. Very nice. Now moving on, this is where you... Um, You'll probably want to be learn how to put stuff into artifacts if you want to keep them around, keep them on the side. So here I may say, create a code snippet that's a function that prints any name given to it 10 times. It's only a few lines of code, so it really doesn't meet the threshold for putting it into artifacts. 
But now let's assume, you can see here, here's the code it generated. But now let's assume I want it in my artifacts. All I have to say is put this in my artifacts. And it will put it over in your artifacts. Ta-da. So it doesn't have to adhere to that 15 lines and all that other junk. You just tell it, put it in the artifacts. Now, I've only got two messages remaining, so I may run out here. That's all right, I'll pause and then we'll come back. But here we go. Let's say create a simple uh, SVG image for me because it can create scalable vector graphic images. You can see here again, it creates the text and boom, simple SVG. Nice, nice. One more message remaining, no problem. Let's create a single web page that takes in a name and, uh, uh, and returns it in a label once you press a button. Simple HTML. So away we go. It's gonna create some nice simple HTML. <coughs> And there it is, type in a name. And then of course you can take this code. You see here I've got preview and code. So I can literally take this code, copy it and paste it. There's a copy here, by the way. You can even download it if you want. There's a download to files, copy, uh, and you're good to go. So I'm out of messages. This is the one problem I have with Anthropic Claude and Anthropic All Up. Even if you subscribe to Pro, which by the way, I do have a Pro subscription. But even if you subscribe to it, they screw you on the number of iterations. That's why I don't recommend you use it in your day-to-day -day work, or at least be prepared to switch back to ChatGPT until they pull their head out of their ass and actually give you more messages. But for now, this is where we're at. I'm gonna pause until three o'clock p.m. my time. It's now 10.50 a.m. my time. So again, that this is why I don't recommend that you use it in day-to-day -day production work, but keep an eye on it. It's a pretty good model. Maybe you use it till you run out of messages and then switch back to ChatGPT. Um, hopefully they will realize that this is a very bad idea. Now this is the free version, I don't have a problem with it. But in, even in my pro version, I'm blocked out. And you only get a few more messages. They say it's five times what you get here, okay. But that's still like, you know, what, 20 messages, 30? God knows what it is. Um, it's just stupid the way they do it. All right, so I'm going to pause until time, and then we'll come back and finish this up. Okay, screw it. I, I decided not to wait. I just made another free account. So anyway, moving on. So now let me show you some other cool stuff, like how about this? Create a simple interactive React web page. Now, you can be more specific about what you want, but this is kind of cool what it will do. So it'll create a nice React web page for us that we can use to interact. And there it is, nice little React counter. Look at that one, dude. up, down, pretty sweet. Now, if I wanted something specific, of course it could deliver on that. But I like giving it some open stuff here so you can see how it gets a little creative. Now let's try this. Get Create a complex uh, React web page. <coughs> Away it goes. Very cool. And by the way, you can, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this. You can give it images. You can have it uh, create stuff from images. It's pretty crazy what it can do. So there you go, complex. Enter a new task, uh, trash, uh, add. There it is, active, completed. It's not completed yet. It gives me task statistics, by the way. So now I'm gonna complete it. It is completed. Pretty cool, task management dashboard. Isn't that awesome? So there you go. One more thing is a bonus because I did say that you could do images. So um, let me get up my slides here and show this to you real quick. So one more little thing, um, animations. You can feed it images and have it do things. One of those things, for example, is create animations. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna take that image I just showed you. I'm gonna feed it to Claude. And then I'm gonna say, can you turn this into a simple React animation so I can understand it better? And so it's gonna take the image, figure out what's going on, and turn it into a simple React animation so I can hopefully understand it better. And it's been pretty good so far in its creation, so I'm pretty happy with the results. So we'll give it a second. There it is. Okay, yep, it's animated. It's kind of flipped around, but it's animated. Okay, got it. And now let's try one more thing. Let's do this, give it much more detail. And away we go, just about out of time. Should be coming right under the wire. <clears throat> Hopefully it'll generate a more uh, interactive one. 
I may have to tell it to turn it sideways and a few other things. <coughs> We're almost over time. But I'm going to let this finish out a few seconds. And you can see all the cool stuff it's doing. So it's going to create an even cooler animation. Okay, yeah, it's sideways. So I'm going to say uh, uh, turn it 90 degrees. Uh, right. And then uh, that should finish it out. I don't know why it rotated it like that. It's super weird. <clears throat> Let's see if we get it. Um, it's been pretty good with its animations. This time it isn't as good as I've seen it, but it's still pretty good. All right, we're almost at time. And ta-da! There we go. Perfect. There we go. Much better. You see the animations now? Pretty cool stuff. All right, that's it. We're at time. This is Zane. I'll see you next time.